everyone. Thank you for showing up and joining us. We have Ayani from University of Virginia joining us today, and she's going to go into how to do business in higher education. I'm Kimberly Snodgrass, NABO Certification Manager. I will let Ayani take it over and do an introduction. And thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you for attending today's Zoom. My name is Ayani Wynn Floyd, and I am the Community Engagement Coordinator for the University of Procurement and Supply Diversity Office. And we'll get started. So how to do business with supplier diversity, and I want to just make this PowerPoint a little bit generalized. Um, so for the first part of the PowerPoint, I'm going to do an introduction, then I'm going to do a department overview, and then I'm just going to do a, uni a university spin generalized to the majority of universities around the nation and how to become a vendor and some upcoming events that we have. So just keep in mind that I'll talk about University of Virginia specifically at the beginning and then towards the conclusion of this PowerPoint, I'll generalize it for everyone because I know we're all in different areas. So if you don't know where the University of Virginia is, we are located in Charlottesville, Virginia, which is a metropolitan area in central Virginia. And I provided a map. If you haven't been there, it's a great community. If you ever are in the area, always feel free to visit. It was founded in 1819 by Thomas Jefferson, and we are a member of BASCUP. And BASCUP is a a university association made up of 13 other universities in the state of Virginia specifically. Other states have memberships and organizations similar to that, but if you are in Virginia and you're looking to provide services or business to a university, VASCA would be a great entry point because it's a large network and all of the procurement agencies are members of it. One thing about the University of Virginia is that we are committed to positioning ourselves and networking with diverse suppliers. And we always aim to have qualified, reliable SWAM owned businesses. And SWAM is just small women and minority owned businesses. For a brief department overview, what is procurement? So I know a lot of people haven't really heard of procurement or supply diversity, so I just wanted to give some background on that. Procurement is basically the process of purchasing goods or services for the university. And usually a lot of procurement offices prioritize having a fast payment process when they, when they have a supplier or a vendor. And the solicitation process is basically, how do we get this good from point A to point C and directing a point of contact for the specific department that needs the good or service. What is supplier diversity? Supplier diversity is a business, a business strategy, excuse me, and a practice that's aimed at developing a more inclusive business group or providing a diverse supplier to the university as a whole. And the benefits you know, account for themselves. We always want to make sure that we provide a great ecosystem for, you know, Charlottesville as a whole, and we are putting back our dollars into the community. So for our university as a whole, we have a supplier diversity and procurement goal, and it's listed on this slide, and I won't bore you with reading it all, but basically we want to make sure that we're strategic in leveraging our purchasing power as a university. We want to work with all suppliers and, you know, buyers and vendors, but we want to just make sure that we have the highest level of service and innovation for those strategic vendors that we work with daily. It is important to note that the structure of most universities is something called decentralized buying and what a decentralized purchase order looks like is basically we have a model where we have over 200 departments at the University of Virginia and most universities have over 100 departments but to generalize that decentralized buying is using the means of providing a variety of resources to the various departments 
at the request of the buyer or the business admin, depending on who is the lead for that department. And depending on their needs, different RFPs, and that's going to be coming up in the presentation later, that means request for proposal will come up at a later time point in time, so just keep your eye out for that terminology RFP. I love fun facts, and one of the first fun facts that I wanted to provide you all with is that procurement manages 30% of the university spend, and that quote is dedicated from our uh, director here in procurement and supply, supplier diversity, Mark Cartwright. So that's just one of the fun facts of many. So a department overview of our top spend here specifically at the University of Virginia, but a lot of universities can apply to this summary. We spend a lot of money on construction. When you think about a university as a whole, many universities have 50 plus buildings and a lot of those buildings need you know services from subcontractors we don't have the capacity within the university of virginia to build all of our buildings inter internally so we have to source that out to a different contractor and a lot of those contractors vary depending on the need for the building specifically here at the university of virginia we have our own university healthcare system so we buy a lot of lab supplies for our healthcare system, as well as our research facilities across grounds. So that's the reason why we have a lot of need for lab supplies. We have food management, which is a high expense. Um, we have a lot of students we have to feed, and we also have to make sure that the food is taken care of. So food management is a high expense. We also have a lot of events across grounds. So that also accounts for that measure. We have a lot of furniture that's being purchased and a lot of universities maintain their own buildings and they also include you know, renovations yearly. So furniture is a big spend. IT, AKA information technology. We have a lot of computers. We're all on a cellular device or computer currently during our Zoom. And that just reflects, you know, how modern times have impacted the country as a whole. So for every person that works at a university, they may have two to three devices just for work purposes. So we have to account for that and always make sure that we're using the latest technology and the latest servicing for our technology. And generally at a university, you have a lot of maintenance. You cannot maintain the building solely just depending on your maintenance workers. So we always have to outsource or look for a company that can outsource, whether it be providing, you know, carpentry work to plumbing to HVAC resources, we're always looking to find a way to make sure everything gets done in a timely manner. So maintenance is of top spend. And then I provided at the bottom a link. I'm not sure if every, every state uses the system called EVA, but this is a great resource for a lot of business owners and I can provide this link. But it's um, also a possibility if you have a um, smartphone, if you hold up your camera to the screen and you hover over it, a lot of times the hyperlink pops up on your phone. So try that if you want to right now and see if you can save this hyperlink to your phone. And this will just direct you to the public record of some of the top spin that our university as a whole um, you know, our top spend expenditure amount. And if you are in the Virginia area, EVA is used by all of the public universities and it's actually a requirement by all of the public universities that we have to report what we spend our money on, who we're spending our money on, and if they are a SWAM firm. So we just make sure that if you are in the Virginia region, look into EVA, learn about it, and you can also um, create a profile on the website. That way you can get updates with upcoming bids and RFPs that are related to your business or a business that you're looking to start. And if you're not in Virginia, 
just look up what public procurement systems that the universities near you use. It's just industry specific and it's also region specific. So one great thing about being a public research institute is you learn about research topics. And I wanted to just to provide you a generalized example for researching your target market. We have two other universities that are located in the state of Virginia. We have George Mason on the slide and we have Radford University, which is the place that I attended undergrad. So I have to, you know, I have to represent my school. George Mason is located in the metropolitan Northeast Virginia region. And one of the main reasons why I wanted to put this university specifically on the PowerPoint slides is because it's a large STEM hub. If you are looking to connect and get into STEM, this is the university for you. They have large data centers and they're partners with a lot of Fortune 500 companies, one being Amazon. And when I think about procuring goods from a university, I always want to know who is the who are the big players who do i need to get in contact with to make sure that i have at least a slim chance of getting a slim dollar from them or a, sl a slim amount of you know servicing from them and when it comes to another school in the state of virginia we have radford university it's located in rural, rural southwest virginia and it borders west virginia I'm not sure if we have any business owners that are in West Virginia, but it's definitely a great school to look at if your business is related to nursing. It has a large nursing program, and it also has a very large childhood education program, and it has its own early childhood daycare center. So if you have any services related to that, that would be a good starting point. And it also is a major partner with the Carilion Clinic service provider in the region. So just keep those things in mind when it comes to the universities near you. What is this university good at? What industries does this university specialize in? Um, what do they buy the most? Who are the decision makers? There's no point in wasting your time talking to someone that can't help you out or doesn't know the right contacts. So just make sure that you conserve your energy and you use the right resources available to you. And a great thing to look into is how large is the university endowment? Most of the times, if it's a smaller university, they don't have a lot of the resources that a top university would have. So just keep that in mind. And I provided a link with an estimate for some of the large endowment schools, and I will click it and just give you a a general um, understanding of, you know, who are some of the larger universities in the nation as a whole. Can you guys see my um, shared screen of endowments? Not no? yet. We Not still yet. see the research or target market screen. Okay. Let's see. Now we can see it. Okay, perfect. So on my screen, you will see um, some of the universities in the, the country as a whole, and um, you'll probably know a lot of these universities. For example, Harvard, of course, is at the top, and this is just specifically referring to 2020. So a lot of these endowments have most likely gone up since then, but Harvard is at the top. Um, beginning of the fiscal year, um, Harvard had 40 million. In the end, it had 41. Uh, Yale is falling up in second place. And if you scroll all the way down to number 18, University of Virginia is on the list, um, but we're probably one of the smaller universities on this list. So just keep that in mind. If you see a university that is in your area, that would be a great place to start. And just keep in mind what the university buys the most and who you need to talk to department-wise. If you are a business that's in marketing, a great place to start would be maybe a, a, you know, a university athletic department if they need you know, marketing services. Just make sure you generalize your needs according to your business model and your business services. You don't want to be uh, arts and crafts 
business trying to sell to the facilities maintenance department at the university you know maintenance won't have a need for colored pencils and crayons and you know maybe crochet needles so just make sure that you generalize all your information and then get specific once you do your research Okay, next we have services SWAM vendors can um, receive. So when it comes to SWAM vendors, there are some ways that you can advance yourself and receive resources from your local university or educational, educational college or community college. So if you're thinking about reporting and, you know, getting more information that's your market specifically you could always ask your local procurement team you know what are you spending the most money on what are, what are some upcoming conferences and networking opportunities that you think i should attend and you think i should look into um, what are some connections that i can make with larger firms that you're aware of and just give them a brief background on what you do and where you want to be in five years. And maybe they can think to themselves, oh, I knew a contact at Aetna, or I knew a contact at um, Dominion Energy or Amazon that you should look into or you should work with at a later date. Let me give you their business card. That would be a great you know, help for a small business owner. Keep in mind that we are decentralized um, buyers, so every department may have a different resource or a different contact, so it, you will never stop learning. You will always be learning every day. Um, keep in mind that your local university can provide you information on nonprofits or small businesses in the area that could also use your resources. And you want to make sure that you optimize your sales pitch and you personalize your sales pitch. So make sure that you create a, a slide deck or a capability statement that's specific to that university. You don't want to, you know, reuse the same sales pitch every single time. And lastly, refer to your local SWAM certification contact, which varies by state. Um, in the state of Virginia, we have the uh, Small Business and Supplier Diversity Office which stands for SBSD, who does a lot of our SWAM certifications, but each state has a different process that you can utilize. And then if you're not a SWAM owned business or vendor, don't worry, there are still some more resources for you. And this also applies to SWAM owned vendors and businesses. You make sure that you coordinate events and keep in touch with uh, other SWAM suppliers in your area. So if you are a large or non-SWAM vendor, still reach out to SWAM vendors and you know, minority owned business owners. You can always make sure that you're networking with them and seeing how you can grow together and you know, bounce ideas off of each other. You could ask for information about SWAM plans or requirements for your upcoming RFP. So RFP is that acronym that I mentioned earlier, which means request for proposal. So just make sure you get, you know, your ducks in order when it comes to an upcoming RFP. And a lot of those RFPs are, you know, 10 pages or more. So getting that SWAM plan requirement in advance is a great way to stay on top of your game. A lot of business owners like to wait to the last minute and procurement staff is very specific on due dates. There's no way that you can slide an RFP or slide your business information in after the fact. There are a lot of laws and regulations that prevent them from even considering you if that due date passes, so keep that in mind. Um, sourcing NGIP codes, which stands for National Institute of Governmental Purchasing, and that's just basically a code that identifies a product or a service. So if we put it in the computer system, it's an easy way for us to see what department is spending money on computers or, you know, what 
department is purchasing a lot of athletic apparel. It's just a short code for us to type in the system and get to where we need to fast and quickly. Lastly, make sure that you uh, provide uh, your contacts with a lot of vendor um, registration info. So say if there's a vendor registration website for specifically University of Virginia, we have different registration portals for catering specifically. So if you are looking to get on that vendor registration platform, provide that contact with information that they need to register you. Or if it's an invitation process, take the invitation, register yourself and put in your website, your business name, your business hours, and a person or a contact within your business internally, that would be the university sales rep. Because you may be a business owner and you may be busy, so who else could that procurement staff get in contact with if they can't reach you at a later date? Study the team. That is a great exercise for a lot of business owners. And I would love to do an exercise on how to study the team. And this is just a general example of studying the team. And this can be interactive, so you don't have to mute yourselves for this portion of the slide deck. But when it comes to studying the team, we have these teammates that are not real people. These are just examples. We have Anna, who is the business admin. We have Roman, who is the lab tech. We have Federico, who is the data analytics manager. We have Jim, the assistant director, and we have Larissa, the department director. So you can unmute yourselves, but the question for you all is, who would you most likely think would know what needs to be purchased in your department, and who would you reach out to in this instance? And anyone can answer this with you know ideas or thoughts. Anyone? I would think um, for me, uh, my services are data analytics. It would either be Frederico or Larissa. That's who I would put down. Thank you. And you said data analytics. That's a good perspective to have when it comes mm -hmm. to your business specifically. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I would say that the business admin would be the person who knows about what is needed. And ultimately the department director, Larissa, is gonna be the one who determines what, what's gonna be purchased. I guess like those two in uh, collaboration would be the people to have the most information. Thank you. And what was your name? This is Teresa and I'm a Wahoo. I'm just in Dallas now. I'm in Dallas, but I'm a Wahoo from Virginia. Yay. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get one more volunteer? Who would you reach out to and why? I'll go ahead. Um, I'm guessing I agree with her. I would reach out for the department director or the assistant director with what's being environmental engineering. We're a consulting firm, so leading in sustainability. We don't, we're not a tangible goods. We're, we're more consultants and professionals. Thank you. Yeah, though, all of these answers are correct. There is no right or wrong answer. It's all about strategy and your business directly. I personally think it also depends on what your business is. So I heard a, a few different answers. Someone was a environmental engineer. So you would most likely want to focus on our environmental engineers department and then, you know, divide and conquer. And then I think I heard someone else say data analytics. So like you said, you might be interested in Federico more than others. Before I get to the answer, I would like to just highlight this link that I have on the screen that says uvafinance.virginia.edu slash people. Um, if you ever have any free time on your hands, this is a great way to find people at the University of Virginia. It's literally just a search engine and you can type in a department name or you can just type in a, a person's name if someone ever were to mention a contact's name but they can't remember, oh, what their email is. This is a way to find them. 
and this is open to the public to do their research and you know find future contacts um but for the answer i personally thought reaching out to both Anna and Larissa would be a great strategy. So whoever gets, uh, I think it's Teresa, Teresa. Okay. Yes. The, the fellow Wahoo that that was a great strategy that you had because at the end of the day, yes, Larissa is the department director and she is, you know, the head of the department. Anna would most likely know the ins and outs of what they're low on or when's the next time that they need to buy something specifically because she deals with it every day. So it just depends on your own personal strategy, but you always have to break down, you know, who are the decision makers and who realistically could use my business contact because you don't want to waste your time. You always want to conserve your energy. So just keep that in mind when it comes to your personal business. Another fun fact of the day, 90% of purchase orders originate on the department level. So just think about that for a second. All of these departments that are at, you know, public universities or private universities originate on the department level. So, you know, the president of the university is not overseeing all of these specifically. He's not, you know, dictating what we do. But these individual department levels are saying, hey, we need more lab supplies. We're getting low on them. We got to order them. We have to get these, you know, purchase orders out fast. Who do we know that we can, you know, utilize, you know, at a short moment or a short notice? So that's some of the things that a lot of staffing or like department leaders need to keep in mind is that, yes, you need to have a lot of these goods and services bought in a fast amount of time, but you also always have to consider who are some small businesses in our area and how can we get some diverse suppliers involved in the process. Just make sure that you're reaching out to these department leads and department heads and putting your name out there. They may not need you now, but maybe eventually they'll circle back and say, hey, I remember you from a few months ago. I have an opportunity for you. So we're getting near the end of this you know presentation i have a summary of some of the things that i would love for everyone to remember from this presentation and take with them so always remember to research your target market what departments could realistically utilize your goods or services find that decentralized buyer on that website that i provided earlier um, with larissa and anna keep that in mind when it comes to your decentralized buyer and look into seeing if your university near you has a search engine or a contact list for you to narrow down your leads. Provide a customized sales pitch, everyone. You know, I know we like to copy and paste and save time, but really just think about how you can customize a sales pitch and always think about providing a few things for that sales pitch. A lot of times we have um, internal meetings with a lot of different suppliers and business owners. And I can say the business owners that walk into the meeting with a capability statement, you know, a product sample, a service demo and references makes a lasting impression. We're always looking like, oh, wow, they really came prepared and they stay on the front of our minds, you know, for whenever we can tell them about an upcoming you know, purchase order or RFP that's on the horizon. So just make sure that you stay prepared for whenever that time comes and show them your work from, you know, prior services or, you know, prior clients and let them know that, hey, this client speaks highly of me and they're always willing to show that they are a reference if you would like that at a later date. And then after that sales pitch, monitor your sales or talk to your, you know, sales lead, you know, hey, have you heard from, you know, XYZ department, did they follow through with using our business or, you know, purchasing this product? And if you haven't heard from them, follow up, ask for a debriefing. Debriefings are quite a great way to get constructive criticism and you can hear and listen objectively and learn what you could improve on the next time you talk to a, a different university or a different business opportunity. And after you get a debriefing, follow up again and keep your business at the top of their mind and 
always make sure that they know that, hey, I'm still interested. I'm going to be here whenever you need me, come find me. And just keep that in mind. And we're going to get to this portion of questions. So I would love to open it to everyone and see if you would like to ask me something that you've had in your mind. Oh, I see a hand already. Hello. Is that me, Ayani? Ayani? Yes. How do you that right? Ayani. 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 Okay. All right. Cool. It's Teresa again. So you mentioned SWAM and I got disconnected. So maybe you covered this and I just missed it. But um, for the certification, is that something, is there a process for that? I'm in the process of right now going through getting my uh, WeBank certification which seems to cover a lot of things, but it sounds like the SWAM is specific to states. Is that correct? Or is there a SWAM process that uh, for certification? Correct. It is specific to your state and your region. So for example, um, in the state of Virginia, we have the SWAM, which is small women minority owned. And that's specific to the uh, small business and supplier diversity office here in Virginia specifically. So it just depends on what region you're in and what they offer within your state office. And do I have to be in a, you know, I live in Texas. I do business everywhere. Um, do I have to be in, do I have to get certification for every state? And can I get these opportunities regardless of the state that I'm in? You don't have to get a certification for every state. And um, some some states don't do certification. So you don't have to get every certification that each state offers because they're still going to do business with you at the end of the day. They met with you. They see what you're capable of. They saw your references and they are still interested. So it's not a necessity. The main thing that the SWAM certifications are used here in Virginia specifically is for the state spend goal. So we as a state of Virginia have prioritized doing business with small women and minority owned businesses. So say if a business registers as a SWAM owned business, that just ensures that, hey, this university gets credit for doing business with this, you know, minority owned firm. We can count that spin towards the goal as a whole. It's just a way of certifying that they are a minority owned business or they are a woman owned business. So if that makes sense, it's just to keep track that we're taking part in our individual spin goal and it holds the university accountable. That was a good question. Oh, and one thing to note about um, SWAM certifications is that some states don't participate in this. So even if you were, for example, in DC, SWAM certifications and SWAM goals specifically um, don't apply to DC residents. So like say if we did a did business with a DC resident and we know they're minority owned, that expenditure that we had or that money that's going towards that business doesn't count in our state goal because of that region that they're in. Nothing against the businesses in that region. It's just, it doesn't apply to our larger goal. Okay, so the SWAM certification helps you track your goals. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It helps us track it and see where the money's going. Great question. So I have a question for you all. Has anyone met with a university in your area? And if so, how did that process go or what was the result? I can speak to that. So here in Indiana, um, well, for example, when it comes to the diversity span goals, like there's a lot of emphasis on that and a lot of collaboration from all of Indiana's universities. And we, we have a solid relationship with pretty much all of them and have historical work in the past with them and ongoing with a lot of them now. Um, but it's really a beautiful thing to see the collaboration from the universities to intentionally seek out diverse um, and certified suppliers and vendors. 
uh, we have one here called Ball State University. It's one of my favorites. In fact, they're the meeting I'm going to be in next. They do a weekly diversity chat where it's a it's a Zoom meeting and it's an open forum for any uh, diverse business, whether they're certified as of yet or not, to come in and network and get their get their information out there. But for us, like my experience with the universities that I've directly had contact with is they're very proactive. Um, they tend to keep their diverse suppliers in the front of their minds, at least our procurement managers do. Um, and they've also been setting forth both physical and um, like Teams meeting and Zoom meeting opportunities to do direct intentional XDE outreach. That's my experience. It's been pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, I love to hear that you had a positive experience with Ball State, and I'm glad that they made a positive impact, you know, on your views of procurement as a whole. Absolutely. And I think I see a Amber, and I may pronounce this wrong, uh, is it Tatiana? Is Any order is fine. Yeah. yeah, do you want to go first? Titania. Mm -hmm. Titania, sorry. No problem. Um, yes, I have had the opportunity to actually work with a university here locally. Um, and I was fortunate in that they reached out to me. And so, um, and then I was able to share with them that I was um, certified. And so um, as a result, um, I have been working with them for probably about um about four months now, um, and that experience has been a good one. Um, some challenges, but you know, initially starting off, but at the same time, um, very they were very um, understanding the fact that I'm a small business, and they wanted to make sure that um, they paid me in a timely manner, as well as um, that we communicate in such a way that um, I'm able to produce what they need, as well as. I need, I have what I need from them. So yeah, it's been a great experience. And what was the name of that university? Um, Auburn University at Montgomery. Okay. I think it was an Amber. Yeah. Yeah. We um thanks thanks for being here. Thanks everyone for for being on. Uh, we do work with the University of California, um, particularly University of California Irvine. And that's been a great experience for us as well. Uh, we were invited to participate in an RFP and had a, a personal connection, right? So we had somebody who knew somebody who said, hey, you should at least consider um, this agency. And so I have a um, marketing and technology agency. And so we came in to that RFP and had an opportunity to um, work directly with them in terms of the responses and everything. And, and we were able to get that. Uh, and then we've continued that relationship. But I think one of the challenges for us has been, you know, the loved your side on the department purchasing and the decision. So we we have a really great relationship there, but then being able to expand that, you know, we're growing our higher education um, portfolio, but then looking at how do we get, you know, into some of these other areas, we've been registering in some of the portals and things like that, but um, haven't received any requests out of that and aren't, you know, actively doing that kind of outbound sales and aren't quite sure where to go to do that. So I think that's that's where we're trying to um, figure out next steps and how to best do this. You mentioned next steps and this almost slipped my mind, but um, definitely a part of the, like the debriefing process is ask the procurement contact that you have, could you provide a contract from a previous company that's similar and interesting to mine? That way you can look at what their pricing is like and what they're bidding on specifically. And also some companies offer discounts. So that's a great way to look at what other people are doing and how do you make sure that you're staying on trend with that university's needs. Because in Vascup, for example, if one company is a promotional items company and they have a contract with George Mason and in their contract, they're offering us a 20% discount on shipping and handling, that discount applies to all of the schools within the Vascup organization. So we all can spend with them and utilize all of those discounts and, you know, 
rewards that's in that specific contract. So always look to see what other companies are doing and kind of be nosy and see what's in their contracts so you can stay ahead of the game. That's great. Thank you. Did we have any questions in the chat? I haven't gotten a chance to look at it. I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay. I don't think so. I have a quick question. So I noticed, so your spend, let's say furniture, because I do have a few women that we've certified who are, they, they're artists. Would artwork be encompassed in that or interior design with the furniture? I'm just, I'm trying to, Think about how can we peel back the layers of some of the categories to see what's underneath that we may not realize. Okay. That's a good one, um, specifically because I know we have a lot of like artwork and we have like the school of arts and visual arts. And how do I break this down? Because there's so many things I could, you know, direct you to and my mind's kind of like sporadic, but yeah, I would say for starters find out who the university contracts for construction and who they contract for interior design. And with that being said, here at the university, we have like three major construction firms that are all required to utilize SWAM owned businesses. And that's their job. Like they are supposed to find the SWAM owned businesses. They're supposed to make sure that they're finding diverse suppliers and they have their own SWAM spend requirement internally. So for example, if you are SB Ballard or Oregon or Skanska, um, we, those are the people that we work with for construction in this area. Network with them and say, hey, I heard that you just got a contract with UVA for uh, data, technology. I heard you're making that new building for them. Who are you using for interior design and how can I provide my services? You know, introduce Excellent. yourself to those, mm -hmm. you know, big players and also see what construction firms are having events locally near you. Because a lot of these firms put on a lot of events and, you know, are looking for those SWAM vendors. They just don't know where to start. So insert yourself into that circle. Okay, excellent. That was definitely one of my questions. Thank you for asking that question because um, my clients are in that category. And so that's something I think about a lot. I appreciate that. The other question I had, maybe it's related, is um, how large, what size, how large does your business have to be, right? Because um, some of us who are smaller, we want to make sure that we can provide the services, but, um, you know, how do we make sure that we're, we're able to compete as a small business? That's a good question. So it depends on what type of business you are. So for example, say if you are on ground slash, you know, on University of Virginia property, you have to make sure that like, if you're in person, you have you know, insurance and that insurance has to be a certain dollar amount. I can't specifically account for it, but for like construction firms, for example, they have to have like multi-million dollar, you know, liability insurance Policy, and, they, yeah. and they also have to be, you know, bonded and they also have to be like certified with a class a license mm -hmm. so that means they have to be big but if you are a consulting firm you yeah. don't apply to that measure because your services are virtual you're not a large risk you know on grounds or on the campus so it doesn't really apply to you you just have to do research specifically to the the university that's near you but i don't think that there's um there's like a minimum requirement for people that aren't you know large construction firms got it and then the other question i have is whether there are contracts i know that um some government contracts will be um 
will be granted if they're below a certain amount without being competitive, without the RFP. So what are those opportunities with the universities? Yeah, so to circle back on the government side of it, so government side of like contracts is like you could get streamlined straight to the money because you're like swam owned firm. And a good resource for that is PTAC, P as in Paul, T as in Tom, A as in Apple, and C as in car. And that's just a federal procurement. Um, organization so they help with procuring goods and services on a federal level Um, the universities are state so they utilize a little different bit of resources but federal level definitely look into PTAC when it comes to the university uh, can you tell me the last part of your question again sorry sure I just wanted to ask if there are a great, or if there are opportunities for businesses, if we're, um, if you have a need under a certain amount threshold, where you wouldn't have to you, we wouldn't have to go through an RFP, that we could also um, possibly be a vendor, I guess, through your supplier diversity program, where you would reach out to us to directly, and it's not a competitive bid necessarily. Okay, yes. Okay, so there is a dollar amount. I don't know the exact, but I can look it up. If your service is below a certain amount, you don't need an RFP. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I can look it up because it does exist. Um, I used to work for the city of Charlottesville. And I think for like local government, um, the dollar threshold is like if it's below 50,000. So just yes, keep yes, that it's typically 50,000. Perfect. Yep. So if it's below 50,000, then you don't need to compete against others. And it just depends on like what region you are. I know like if you're in like northeast part of the country, then your threshold may be a little bit different. But that was a great question. And then I think uh, some, I saw someone mention the $2, two million um, liability is what yeah. they seen. So that was a good uh, point. That was from Rose. And I don't see any other questions in the chat. There's been some really, really good questions. Yes, really good questions. And you guys get me thinking. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. (laughs) I remember reading that a while back in the RFP that I saw like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I was just saying there's just a lot to know to just doing business and biodiversity, there's just, there's, there are a lot of different nuances to it. And I do, Ayani and I were at a conference in Virginia last month. And I, the big takeaway for me was just, you know, do all of these things, but also be good at what you do. And what problem are you solving? That was just a big takeaway and know that, know those answers, you know? So, but, and you were going to go ahead and say something, I interrupted you. I think I was going to say something along the lines of just you never stop learning. I used to work in economic development and then I switched to supplier diversity and I never stopped learning. Like, you know how I was able to like quote some of these thresholds? That's just because I sit down, I Google, you know, what are some contracts that we have coming up? And I go down and I scan the contracts. Now, these contracts are like 20 pages long. I'm telling you, you guys, these contracts go long. But if you take the time and you get a little nosy, like say if you have a Saturday to yourself and you're bored, take the contract time and look up who's similar to you and see what they're doing. Um, This is a good segue. Um, Some of our contracts include a SWAM commitment for a lot of larger firms in our contracts. They're obligated to sponsor our SWAM Fest. And SWAM Fest is basically a a smaller conference that we have in Richmond, Virginia. Um, This is an upcoming event that we have November 1st to the 2nd. And it's the premier event and networking opportunity for a lot of small women and minority owned firms. So if you are in Virginia or you want to do a little field trip, I provided the link for you to look into that. But in our contracts that we have at the university, we put that in there. Hey, you're required to sponsor this event. For, and this is for the greater good of small women and minority owned businesses. And we're going to require you sponsor it at $1,500 or $3,000, depending on how large your business is and what your revenue is. 
but a lot of contacts and procurement make sure that we help advance SWAM owned businesses. So keep that in mind, you know, when it comes to the time that you get into that position to sign that dotted line, read that contract over thoroughly and make sure you know what you're committing yourself to. Excellent point. And do we have any women on here who are in the Virginia area? I don't think we do. I think they would have probably spoken up. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Is it, this is the end of your presentation, correct? Yes. Okay. And I just have a contact slide right here. And feel free Perfect. to take a picture of this. Um, you know, write down my email, my name, my phone number. I'm here, available. If you have questions, let me know. And also, if you're thinking about doing business with a university that's not University of Virginia, feel free to re email me if you have questions about like James Madison or Radford or like um, Norfolk State. They're all still in that VASCUP, you know, association. So we all still know each other if you need to contact those universities as well. It's not about I, what you know, it's about who you know, so. I think this is great and I appreciate you. I'm gonna take a picture of it as well, even though, even though I have it, I may just put it in an email to everyone. I, I think it's it's so gracious of you to offer your, to assist anyone regardless of if it's UVA or not. So thank you for for offering that. And it's, it's just nice to have a contact. Okay, I'm going to ask Ayani. She she can help guide me or or email her. So I I think that's a really nice gesture. Yes, thank you. And then I had a uh, raised hand from Rose. Hi, I'm 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 actually traveling. Um, so will we be able to get the slides for this? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I was the couple of the links. Also, uh, I wasn't able to catch. Also, there is a link that you mentioned i don't know if it was on a slide but mm -hmm. it's in regards to finding the email addresses for um individuals within the university system is that, yes. is that was that something that was that on the slide or is that in the chat that's on the slide and i can also put it in the chat okay okay awesome thank you you're welcome yes and if you want to email me your slide presentation i can just go ahead and forward it to everyone who's in our certification program and get it out that way if that makes it easier for you and and rose yes here is the contact <laughs> i just Thank you. slid it in the chat for those that can look at the chat and i'll also provide the slides perfect 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 well we are coming up the top of the hour and i want to be respectful of your time does anyone have any last questions before we wrap it up I think we're good. So, Ayani, thank you. Huge thanks for, for coming on. And I, I took a lot of notes, just so you know, because I do think there is a lot to all of this and there's a lot to know. And, you know, the more I know, the better I can show up for all of the women in our programs. And I also want to thank everyone who attended for just engaging and asking really great questions. So thank you so much to everyone. Thank you for having me.